Hi, my name is Kathy Clark. I'm an exercise physiologist and I help to provide exercise programs at Ramsey Mental Health. Today I'm going to speak to you about the power of exercise and how we can use exercise as medicine. So an exercise physiologist is a university trained uh, health professional who will help individuals who are either dealing with mental health issues or physical injuries and just provide direction and programming to help them recover. The role of an exercise physiologist is to guide, support and motivate people dealing with mental health issues. So quite often they don't have the motivation to, to really move into exercise on their own accord. So we're just there to give them a helping hand. When you come to see an exercise physiologist, you'll normally go through a health screening process. So we want to make sure that there aren't any underlying physical conditions that would prevent you from exercising safely. But most importantly, even if there are underlying physical conditions, there are so many things that you can do to start really moving forward in terms of your health and well-being that an exercise physiologist can really tailor an individual program for you so that no matter what condition you are in and no matter what you're facing, that there will be something that you can do to really empower yourself. The most common question we get from patients regarding exercise is probably how do I fit this into my day? And the number one response we give them, it really isn't a matter of time, it's a question of priority. So really making your exercise a priority. And a lot of the times we may not feel like doing our exercise, but it's one of those things that once you've done it, you'll never regret having made the time to do it. In terms of how we define exercise, if you're really inactive, just that act of getting up off the couch is really so powerful. The recommendations by the Exercise Science Council is really we need people moving 30 to 60 minutes a day. And the recommendations are actually of moderate to high intensity, which is terrifying for most people to think that they need to exercise at a high intensity. So just remembering that just to get moving is the crucial component and working within the boundaries of what's appropriate for you. We do want to elevate your heart rate and an elevated heart rate means you should be able to answer me yes and no. If you can carry on a long-winded conversation, you're not exercising intensely enough. So that's a really black and white way of, of looking at without having to use heart rate monitors. So we want you breathing more deeply. We want you to be breaking out in a little bit of a sweat, but we never want you to be pushing yourself to the point where you feel like you're really fighting for your breath and just consciously thinking, I can't do this. That's never the zone that we want you to be in. So an example of moderate to high intensity exercise will be dependent on the individual's exercise level and fitness level. So for some people walking briskly will most certainly be high intensity exercise. And then if you have someone with a really uh, high fitness level, going for a run or for a jog would be more so conducive to them elevating their heart rate to the right level. So again, it's always really looking at the individual person, finding out where their current fitness level is, and then prescribing things that are appropriate for them. So a large movement, so walking, swimming, cycling, running, yoga, uh, basketball, tennis, anything that just gets you moving and gets your heart rate elevated, putting on your favorite music and dancing, that's exercise. In terms of additional benefits other than just the physical component to exercise sessions, you'll also see enhanced mental well-being through self-esteem, self-confidence. People sleep better, they make better decisions in terms of their nutrition, Overall, their mood is elevated, but also overall their mood is more stable. So there's so many other benefits to be found other than just the pure physiology of exercise. At times we're asked, what is the downsize of exercising? 
There isn't one. There really isn't one. It's all positive and it's all beneficial unless you hate to sweat. That might be the only downside.